Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing. Welcome to my channel and get ready, get comfy, get something to drink because I am going to be showing you everything I made in June. I am mainly going to be focusing on some things that I made that did not make it to the channel but I did make. Basically when I've already made something and there's already a dedicated video towards that pattern I don't make another video with another same make because it's like redundant, right? But I do frequently repeat my makes and then I might just show them in this manner. To start, I'm going to go through all the makes that you've already seen on the channel from the start of the month in June to the end when I was compiling this I was thinking to myself, oh my word, this woman has no life. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's go through them. To start the month, I made two kawaii tops from each to stitch. I made one in black crepe and that was my wearable muslin. Then I went off to make one in silk. I love this pattern. I love the details on the bib on the front, as you can see there with a the little button. Super cool make. Then I went off to impulsively make the summer basics tank dress by Love Notions. <laughs> I made it the same day it was released. I wasn't able to be a pattern tester for this one. I was too busy. <laughs> but he used to styling it, you know, in a more formal way, in a more casual way, always with something on top because I am in winter. Then for Love Notions, I wrote a guest blog post featuring the Sibyl Illusion skirt collection. These are seven skirts and I chose this pencil skirt to make zipper hacks, front zipper hacks, and another hack to the front to make it look super cool. Then I got the gourd skirt of the patterns and mashed it to the Margaret Peplum bodice from Love Notions and made that dress. I've already worn it out, felt super cool in my crazy striped dress. I love playing with stripes if you don't notice. <laughs> this is a chai dress from Itch to Stitch that I showed you as well. A shirt dress, lots of buttons, full on collar stand, empire cut, love the dress. Then comes the Melody Dolmen. This is my tester version, my first one muslin, super good fit. Tie, you can tie it or just wear it normal. Dolman sleeves, I also made another one in stripey fabric that I played with the stripe direction, I had a lot of fun doing that. And then I went off to make my pinned dress come true. This is my inspiration, asymmetric hem, stripe play as well, using the Melody Dolman shirt. I hacked it into a dress and came up with my version already worn it out, loved it. The day I wore it to church, I got lots of compliments. Where do you get the dress? And it's a typical, oh, I made it, you know, and that's where the conversation stops. Then I went off to make my first jumpsuit. This is the Orchid Midi Parasol Trousers collaboration between Chalk and Notch and Ensemble Patterns. Love the jumpsuit, love it. The Sirocco jumpsuit from Deer and Doe turned out to be a fail for me. This is a neat jumpsuit. I did not like the pleats in the front and this is becoming a dress. Then I made the orchid midi dress again with fabric from Minerva Crafts in crinkle chiffon. I did a hack to the front to create a tulip shape and I love that dress. Then I finished the month by making the Tessa sheath dress from Love Notions with a skirt hack from the Sibyl Illusion to have that crossover there in the front with buttons. Super cute and that is how I end the month. So pretty full on, pretty full on. I have to admit, I did get stressed in some portions of the month, but not that much. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> sewing is what I do. Sewing is what I love. And actually the sewing aspect of making the garments does not take me that long. What takes me the longest, and I've said it before, is filming, editing, photographing, all the process, uh, the production process of getting the videos up. That is what takes the longest, not the sewing. <laughs> the next things I made are just the cutest explosion you'll ever see. I haven't shown these anywhere because I was waiting for them to arrive over to Chile. Hubby had a trip and he took them with him because there was someone there that could take them all the way back to Chile. You know, that's how it happens because I don't see my family during the year. I really wanted to make them something and I had purchased fabric locally. Now I purchased fabric that was a border print, French Terry and another fabric that had the exact same print but on sweatshirting. So this is the French Terry that you're seeing there and this other one is the same print but super fuzzy and sweatshirting. So this is fabric I wanted to use and another one that's French Terry, the softest thing you could ever see. Super nice, super soft to make them clothes. You can see the texture on the other side. So I had these two fabrics to make them things. I wanted to make my older niece two dresses. 
I found a pattern online from a company I'd never actually heard about before. The brand is called Misusu and they have a free pattern there for babies to teens. It's called the Rowan Tee and it comes in a pretty wide size range from 3 months to 14 years. I'm putting a picture here. Dolman type sleeve with short or long sleeves, a neckband and optional pockets. And the sizing chart is really detailed. My five-year-old niece fits into the 128 size that is sort of equivalent to a seven to eight-year-old. And I based this off her chest measurement also that I got from my sister-in-law and chose her size. The pattern has two inches of positive ease around, you know, the chest. I'm going to show you the first dress I made for her in the light pink fabric French terry. So here you can see that this dress has a waist seam there. I got the measurement from the shoulder down to the waist from my sister-in-law and that's how I created a bodice from the t-shirt. The t-shirt was slightly longer. Then I drafted a half circle skirt to match the waist seam there. Super flowy, it's been surged at the bottom and the same as the sleeves. I haven't finished those hems because mum was gonna do them by hand when they arrived over there. The sleeves are quite long, um, but that's fine because my niece is pretty long herself. So I, at this stage, am hoping for a good fit, you know, of the dress. The neckband is traditionally inserted there around the neck. There's a little seam at the back. And there is just one seam on the center back of this half circle skirt. Everything's been sewn with a zigzag stitch so it allows it to stretch. It's all neatly finished inside and he is her wearing it. The fit is really good. I think the waist height is spot on. My sister-in-law took the measurements really well and I'm so relieved. So then I went off to make another dress using the exact same bodice only that with the border print I couldn't go and fiddle with circle skirts or half circle skirts. So I made a different type of skirt. So now you're seeing the next dress and this has got pleats. So I used the same bodice and I kept the flowers on the bottom. Now this fabric is super cool because the print makes it look like it's denim with the butterflies on top, but it's actually just, you know, the French terry. Uh, the pleats there keep the flowers intact on the bottom and I think it looks really neat. There are pretty deep box pleats there attached to the waist seam and I'm going to bring this up closer so you can see. I just cut out a whole rectangle, the whole width of the fabric to attach and then whatever was excess, I created three deep box pleats there on the front. They're pretty deep, you know, and on the back the same. So there's just like six humongous box pleats to give the skirt the volume everything's been surged and sewn with a zigzag stitch the same as the other one and i did the neck band with the contrast a uh, flower thing at the bottom <laughs> so it pops i really love this and i just couldn't wait to see her wear it uh just just the cutest fabric ever i just you know <laughs> here she is and she's so cute look how adorable this dress is and so comfy and warm for her to wear in the winter so I'm super excited with those two makes and I'm so glad they fit her. <laughs> you never know when you're making things for someone that's in another country and you can't measure them yourself or assess anything. You go off by measurements that, that you know they give you. So I'm really relieved that they fit. So I wanted to make my baby niece, she's nine months old now, outfits that would match the same two fabrics I've already shown you that I made the older niece, you know, <laughs> so that they can both match and look super cute. So I found it an old Boda magazine that I have from May 2015, the number is 134, a baby bomber jacket. And it's designed to be made in knit fabric, self-lined with snaps, a collar, little bands on the cuffs, on the bottom, everywhere. Super cute. <laughs> so I chose that pattern and I chose size 74 centimeters. The Boda sizing for kids, babies is based on their height. Um, they also do give you chest measurements and things like that, very detailed, that I got from my sister-in-law. I also wanted to make some petite pegs. This is a pattern that's free from Pattern for Pirates, super popular pattern to make baby leggings, and they are so cute. They come from sizes preemie to 12 months old. I decided to go with the larger size just to be on the safe side, and they come in different length options. I just chose the longer length, and I actually lengthened it a little bit more. So I'm going to show you the little bomber jackets first with the matching pegs because I made them in the same fabrics. And first you can see the one that I made in the border print. Now this is so cute, I just can't take the cuteness. This is made in the sweatshirting, the fuzzy one. You can see the little collar there, the little cuffs, the little band. I self-lined with um, 
French terry that I had left over, the white that you're seeing inside. This is gonna be so cute and so fuzzy and comfy for her to wear. I don't have snaps, so I just, you know, made some buttonholes that mom was gonna sew on buttons when they are, you know, when this arrives. <laughs> I don't have pink buttons. I didn't line the sleeves. You can see the fuzziness of the sweatshirting there on the sleeve. I only lined the bodice. And yeah, this is just too stinking cute. <laughs> um, to match this, I made the petite pegs. As I mentioned, I was gonna use that pattern and I placed the flowers on the bottom as well. You can see the fuzzy bits in there. I, I love the waistband that is not the type with elastic, so it won't like squeeze baby's tummy. And yeah, it's just too cute, too cute to bear, really. <laughs> so I used the same pattern to make the same jacket with the other fabric, the French terry, but in this case I didn't, you know, I modified the pattern, it's not a bomber jacket, it's like a more spring style jacket, so there's no collar. I drafted facings for the front and the back, as you can see I interfaced those. This is unlined, it doesn't have cuffs on the sleeves, it doesn't have the, the band on the hem. So this is more like a light little jacket to wear. It's also going to have buttons, I did the buttonholes, mom was going to do those and the matching little tights in the same fabric. Super adorable, super cute, and yeah, I mean, all these projects took me a whole Sunday to sew. From, you know, dawn to midnight, basically. The pegs on her, so cute, the fit is perfect. I have to put stickers on her face, of course, and she's wearing the whole outfit there. The fit was perfect, and I also have a quick shot of her wearing the light pink one. So these were so fun, they were so satisfying to make. I get my cute fix with my nieces. I'm super happy to be able to send some things every now and then when I can so that they can have some cute stuff made by their aunt. So now I'm gonna show you the three things I made myself that I hadn't featured in any you know, video. The first one had got to do with a really, really fun Instagram sewing challenge called Flashback Sewing Challenge. And basically you had to choose an era of time and choose something uh, to sew that was sort of for that era. But for me, sewing always has to be practical. I don't want to be sewing up a costume type garment that I can't wear in my daily life. I want something I can wear. So I settled on the 90s. Look, in the 90s, I was a teenager. I have vivid recollections of the fashion style and how so many of those styles have come back. And so I chose that era. It's an era I'm comfortable with. Um, yeah. <laughs> Looking around and thinking what to be inspired by, I remember being an avid viewer of Friends, the TV show. And I always liked the way Rachel Green dressed. I think the way that she dressed in that series and for those times was pretty much timeless. And I'm gonna put a picture here, an uh, inspiration picture. It's just like a sleeveless denim top with the tie front and a mini black mini skirt with those chunky square heels that, you know, were really the rage back then. I decided to sort of recreate that look. I decided to recreate this by making the Montana shirt by Itch to Stitch. I have made this before in chiffon last year. I love the pattern, love the fit. I did modify it though because the Montana has sleeves, you know? I made mine sleeveless, so I made this one sleeveless again and it goes perfect you know for this look so here is my uh, shirt i made it out of tensile it's the most beautiful scrumptious buttery soft fabric and there is a yoke inside and i finished the arm side with bias binding that i made out of the same tensile here is the collar stand and the collar the buttons i made out of metal and then the pattern has a cut line for you to make it cropped like this or normal length without the ties. I did lengthen the ties and curve them. I like the shape there, otherwise they would just be a rectangle. And because this is really curved, I like hemming with bias binding. So that is the way I would hem any curved thing. So I made bias binding and it's super nice. It's a really nice shirt i love it so up close you can see the neckline detail the collar is really easy to sew i've done it before so i whiz past that stage this is how it looks far away in non-costume you know like everyday wear i really love that tie uh, i think anything with a tie is you know super cool i love that you can see the hem that i've already shown you and what i've done to it to make it lie as best as it can and i've worn this you know, out in the street already, not 
dressed up like Rachel Green, of course. The next thing I have to show you is a project I made for Minerva Crafts. They sent me the fabric. I wrote a blog post that will appear on their website in August, I believe. And it's the Paula Top by Republique du Chiffon. Now, I've made this before a few months ago in this black chiffon. I've already got a whole video about it and it's just basically two pattern pieces and the front has the tie incorporated. So because I was cheating last time and I only had a meter of fabric, I made it single layer and finished all the edges with bias binding. Now that was a lot of hard work, let me tell you. So now that I had actually two meters of fabric, I did make the polar top as the pattern says in two layers and lined with bagging it out and the works, you know? So I'm gonna show you a really short video of how I did that. I have the outer layer of my polar top. I've just chosen it based on how the print turned out on the front and what I find looks nicer. I've sewn the side seams with a 3 8 seam allowance. That's what I gave myself to sew with and I've pressed the seams open. I have surged them. The fabric is delicate, so I have surged. And I've pressed the seams on the shoulder towards the back. Now I have another one that is exactly the same and this will be the inner layer. And to make a difference, I've pressed the shoulder seams to the front so that they sort of nest together. So what I have to do is put these right sides together. I have them there right sides together. So you can see my seams there and the seams on the other side. On one of the side seams of my internal bit, I have left an opening. And that is what I'm gonna use to bag out is in one continuous stitch, pin the whole bottom, neckline, front, the tie, come around the bottom, the tie up, one continuous stitch and bag it out. Through the little hole, through the little hole I've left there, I can just pull it all to the right side and then just hand stitch that closed. I've been trying to turn everything under through that little opening I left through the side seam and I, I want to do it really gently, so I'm just sort of like shaking it. See, you can see part of it still has to go through the opening. So I'm just taking my time. Turning this was a bit of hard work, especially around the front and the ties. You know, it's really small. It's lined. You can see the opening where I bagged it out of. I need to close that by hand with invisible stitching. Now I just need to put these two layers together, baste them and treat them as one. So I can finish these armholes and I'm just going to finish them normally as I would with bias binding. So I'm just going to baste all around there, forget that there's two layers there and carry on as per usual. Okay, so here is my top. It's a chiffon dolby. It is amazing. I love the intense blue in it. Uh, I just love everything about it and I really like this pattern. I love it for a like super light layering thing that I can throw on things. And yeah, I made it as it's supposed to be in two layers. I finished the arm side there with bias binding inside. Look, turning it around was a little bit of hard work, but totally worth it to have this amazing little top that I can put on things. Here you can see it on. I didn't make any pattern modifications, you know, comparing to the first one. So it's, it's nice and cropped. Uh, the feature of the tie I love at the front there, it hits at the right length. I would always wear it with a cami. There you can see the sleeve finish inside. And when I open it up and show you the inside is exactly the same, you know, as the outside. So it's all lined, all finished perfect and I love it. The last garment I want to show you is the Isidro top from Itch to Stitch. Now I have a video about this. I made two tops a few months ago when this pattern was in testing. And then after that, I lengthened this pattern into a dress. 
and I realized I hadn't shown this ever. <laughs> I just put a picture on Instagram. I thought I might as well show you. And you know, I love the top when I made it. I love the detail, the gathering here on the neckline. So I made it into a dress. And I have this ITY I bought in Bolivia just a short few days before leaving Bolivia. I found a shop that had amazing fabric and I was shocked. I'd never seen that shop, you know, <laughs> in the three years I lived there. So yeah, it's got large scale flowers, uh, the band there, the gathering. Uh, I just, yeah, I knew I had to make it out of this fabric. And I did make some precautions due to the fabric choice and the large scale print. I did film it on the day I was making it and put it on my Instagram stories and I was able to retrieve that footage that I'm going to insert here so you can see what I did to create this. I'm using ITY and I've placed my front pattern piece there with the fabric on the fold. You know, I need to give myself a bit of room at the hips because this is going to be a dress. The original top hits mid hip. So the fabric will just allow me three eighths of an inch extra, as you can see, there's like a white strip on the ITY, which is really annoying, but that's, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do as wide as I can there, that the fabric will allow. You can see I've cut my bust circle and you've seen me do that before. Look how huge the flowers are on this print. I really don't want one of those huge flowers on the apex. Now on the other side that's been folded under, I did check that the circle didn't also have a huge flower and it, everything's fine like that. You can see it already cut out. I eyeball, that's what I wrote in my stories there because it really, I really do do that. And I made it as long as the fabric would let me. I measured that it was gonna hit me right above the knee where I want it to be. I really made sure to make it as wide as the fabric let me, which is three eighths of an inch there on the side. It's basically an inch and a half more ease than what I would have at mid hip. And I sort of thought that would be enough. Here you can see me wearing it. You can see that the extra wiggle room I gave myself at the hip is perfect. I love the shape of the top and I knew it was going to work for a dress. I love the shape at the waist. Everything about it is so nice. And look how nice the gathers look with the ITY. I think they look really nice. I did the traditional bands on the arm side and the neckline. Didn't make any changes with that and I'm so happy. I'm super happy and you would have seen in the pictures that I combined these two. I actually wore this out, this dress with that and they go perfect. This shirt can be worn as like a layering piece by just leaving the buttons open and, and using the tie and I think it's a really cool way to use these two together. I wore them out to go fabric shopping and Actually, this fabric, I went into the same shop where I bought it and I showed the ladies that work there, look, you sold me this fabric and it's a garment now. And they were all super, super happy to see the fabric made up. Actually, all the women that work there in the shop, they just sell fabric, none of them sew. And I found that so sad. They, they all want to sew. They were telling me, oh, I wish we could have time to learn and all that, but they just work all day and they don't know how to sew. So I thought that, re that was really sad. <laughs> Anyway, um, it was a good match. I really felt good wearing these two together. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it all this far, <laughs> an explosion of makes, a lot to see, a lot to watch. And I hope you enjoyed watching. I will make something similar in July only if I have makes that I haven't been featured on their own videos. So this is not a common thing for me to do a roundup of makes of the month and things like that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you very soon. Bye!